do you remember when I got my 2023 off to a really hot start? The good news is, I can say with confidence that this transmitter puts out straight fire. The bad news is, it put that fire right into this dummy load. Wait a second, you weren't here. Statistically, you weren't following me then. Maybe you should do so now. Yesterday, I drove from here in Cincinnati to Washington, Pennsylvania to pick up this new dummy load. Well, it's not new, but it's new to us. Now, you may be asking yourself, what is a dummy load? Well, that's, I mean, that's not a bad question because that is kind of a weird term and it is a term that radio people use. The official name for something like this is an RF termination. And what this is, is essentially a gigantic 50 ohm resistor. Now, the reason it's a 50 ohm resistor is because the feed line and the antennas and everything we use in radio broadcasting have a characteristic impedance of 50 ohms. And you have to match that so that you don't damage any of your equipment. But that doesn't really answer the question of what this does. Normally, when you turn on a radio transmitter, it's connected to an antenna because you want to send a radio signal, like radiate it out. Sometimes you need to turn on a transmitter, but you don't want it to send a signal. And that's where the dummy load comes into play. Uh, you connect your transmitter to the dummy load, and instead of radiating the RF energy out from like an antenna, uh, the resistors inside here absorb the RF energy and convert it to heat. Hi, Drew from the editing booth here. I felt like I needed to clarify something. A few seconds ago, I mentioned that impedance matching was important. A dummy load presents a 50 ohm nominal impedance to provide that match, just like a tuned antenna. Any sort of mismatch would cause a percentage of the RF power to be reflected back toward the transmitter, which could damage or destroy it. An open line without anything connected would reflect all the power back to the transmitter, and that's very bad. This is why we use dummy loads for testing. Those resistors get very hot in the operation of the dummy load. And so a lot of these larger loads like this one have a huge, huge air blower somewhere inside that moves cooler air through the entire assembly to cool the resistors. So now that we have this dummy load, I need to clean it and give it a once over before, um, before we install it. And since I wasn't able to show the inside of the one that burned up because, you know, it was burned up and warped and I couldn't really get it apart very easily and, you know, just fire related things, uh, I'll show you around inside this one as I get it cleaned up. But first I have to get these uh, side panels off. I might leave this one on. My first difficulty here is in a lot of these screw heads, there's a bunch of gunk that keeps me from using my battery powered screwdriver on these. So I have to get my uh, multi-tool to just kind of, you know, scrape some of that gunk out of here to actually um, get the screws out. Uh, another thing is I got this side panel off and well, uh, there's no access to the resistor banks. So I'll get the other panels off and then we'll explore this again. Okay, I have three of the side panels off and of course, no access to the inside where the actual resistors are. It's kind of a problem. I suppose one thing I can show you, however, is the coaxial RF connector on top. Um, this is kind of like the coax cables you would plug in to like your TV if you have a TV antenna or a cable box or a satellite dish or a cable modem if you have uh, like cable internet service at home, except, you know, this is, this is much larger here. 
here's the center conductor right here, and then this is the outer shield. And of course, here is the gigantic fan that moves cooler air through the uh, through the load. However, unlike the load that burned up back in January, you can see here that this little fin right here is an airflow switch. So as long as the fan is running, the incoming air should hold this up, which indicates that the uh, load is safe to use. Since I couldn't easily open that dummy load to show you the resistors inside, let's come inside and talk about resistors. This is what most people who have some electronics experience think of when imagining a resistor. A small axial lead resistor with color bands painted on it to indicate how much resistance this component exhibits across its terminals. This is a 47 ohm axial lead resistor that can dissipate half a watt of power. That dummy load is rated for 50 kilowatts, so there are a couple of things we do to get the desired characteristics. The first thing we do is use a resistor like this. In this type, the resistive element is a metal or carbon film, or a winding of thin wire, baked and sealed onto the outside of a ceramic tube, and the protective coating near the ends is sanded off to expose the conductive material below. Since these resistors use a ceramic substrate, they can dissipate much more power and withstand much higher temperatures, and the greatly increased surface area of the resistive material helps these components do so more efficiently. The second thing we do is use multiple resistors. When creating a bank of multiple resistors, the measured resistance across the entire circuit depends on how these resistors are connected. When connecting resistors in series, where there is only one path for current to flow, the total resistance of the circuit is calculated by adding the values of each resistor in the circuit. That's easy. When connecting resistors in parallel, current can flow through any of multiple paths in proportion to the amount of resistance on the path. When calculating the total resistance of a bank of parallel resistors, you need to be familiar with the mathematical concept of a reciprocal. If you need a refresher, a reciprocal is where you flip the two numbers of a fraction. For example, two-thirds becomes three-halves. To express a whole number as a fraction, you place that number over one. To find the total resistance of a bank of resistors connected in parallel, you first need to add the reciprocal of the value of each resistor in the circuit. For example, a 10 ohm resistor would have a reciprocal of 1 tenth, or 0.1. Once you have the sum of the reciprocal of each resistor's value, the total resistance in the circuit is the reciprocal of that sum. That's less easy. This dummy load has 32 resistors rated at 400 ohms each in two banks of 16 resistors each. The 16 resistors in each bank are connected in parallel and the two banks are connected together in series. Now let's sketch that out. For 32 resistors and two parallel banks of 16 that are in turn connected in series, we can simplify things by working on the parallel banks first. In a series parallel circuit like this, the total value of each group of parallel resistors can be treated as a single resistor when computing the series resistance of the entire load. Since our parallel banks are composed of identical resistors, the reciprocal of reciprocals formula is rather simple. First, we can just take the reciprocal of one of the resistors and multiply it by 16. That's 16 four hundredths, which simplifies to 1 25th. The reciprocal of 1 25th is 25 over 1, which is just a fancy way of saying the whole number 25. So the total resistance of each bank of 16 400 ohm resistors connected in parallel is 25 ohms. Now that we've calculated the resistance of each bank and we know both banks are identical, we can now treat this dummy load as a series circuit of two 25 ohm resistors. Remember, when connected in series, you can simply add the value of each resistor to get the total resistance of the circuit, and in this case, with two 25 ohm resistors, you get a total of 50 ohms, which is a perfect match of the characteristic impedance of the transmission line and antennas we use in broadcasting. If you hated math in school, I sincerely apologize. To be successful in a broadcast engineering career, knowing a few common mathematical operations is critical. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and follow or subscribe to see more stuff like this from me. You can also visit my landing page at airwavearchitect.com. I'll catch you next time.